As part of our daily life, we generate different types of waste. And normally, what we do is that we uh, pack this or put all them, all of them together into a um, polythene bag or something like that from a domestic. The waste that we generate in a domestic environment is put into a bag, and either we throw it somewhere or someone comes to collect the waste. And the waste that normally goes out of our house gets accumulated in dump yards or sometimes it is burnt. When we burn the waste, we know a lot of gas is generated which is often very poisonous. And we also generate carbon dioxide which is a greenhouse gas. Now when we, instead of burning, when we dump the waste in dump yards, it's even more dangerous. What happens is that uh, all the waste, when it accumulates, it, it uh, helps in breeding a lot of flies and a lot of uh, uh, rats, uh, dogs, uh, stray dogs, street dogs, all of them multiply, causing a lot of inconvenience to people living around them. And there is a, um, another major problem is the foul smell coming from this type of uh, dump yards. And apart from these two challenges, during rain and even um, when the organic waste, there is a mixed waste, uh, the, especially the organic waste in these dump yards, when they start breaking down, a lot of uh, leachate uh, comes out from this waste dump. And they go and contaminate our drinking water sources. So that is another major challenge. They also contaminate the soil and um, a lot of uh, these dump yards, uh, either people burn them or it catches fire and the plastic in these dump yards, uh, we know it generates uh, toxic gases. So it's again uh, very uh, dangerous for the people living around these dump yards. Another major challenge of these dump yards is uh, most of the dump yards across the world has become methane mines, which is a, a very serious greenhouse gas causing climate change. So the methane is generated because of the organic matter in this uh, dump yards. Uh, an anaerobic environment is created and it uh, gen helps in generating methane. And today, the uh, world's 40% uh, of the methane is coming from the dump yards. And uh, methane is 21 times more potent than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas and we are very often not aware of this kind of uh, impact on uh, our environment by our irresponsible waste management uh, programs. Another major challenge which very often we are not aware of is uh, the uh, carbon, especially places like India where uh, more than 60 percent of the waste is carbon, carbonaceous material. Uh, it is actually wasted in these dump yards. According to nature's carbon cycle, all the carbon which we discard after our use should reach the soil and enrich the soil health. Because the carbon is the most critical material which provides life to soil. So when we are uh, uh, not permitting the the carbon to reach the soil, we are actually really depleting the soil health. So these are the different challenges that we uh, generate by not managing waste properly. Now, suppose we are looking at uh, managing the waste. We have different options. One is collect the waste, take it to a centralized place, segregate, then subject this to different treatment. Again, in this type of uh, centralized waste management program, you need people to collect the waste, 
you need a vehicle to transport the waste, uh, fuel is required and uh, again we need centralized uh, locations, a lot of space is required and today uh, all these are becoming challenges and creating more pollution. Now instead of that we have a great opportunity if we can manage the waste where it is generated or what we call it as decentralized waste management. So in this decentralized waste management program we need some specialized uh, solutions. So I would like to share with you uh, a really effective uh, home, um, uh, home waste management solution. I would like to um, show you how this uh, three bin container is to be set up for proper uh, aerobic composting program. So the blue um, lids that I have in my hand, they have to be placed uh, according to the order. So this lid which has got um, an outer ring which is pointed outward. So this if you look at this uh, uh, piece. Um, it has uh, the ridges pointed outward so this has to be kept at the bottom and uh, on top of this bottom uh, base we keep one bin at the center and on top of uh, this bottom uh, bin we we have there are two identical uh, lids two lids which are there are two lids which are identical so one lid is kept on top of this and again we keep one more bin on top of this uh, first uh, lid. So we have again another uh, lid which is similar to the previous one and on top of that we keep the third bin. And finally on top we have the top lid with the ventilation and a handle. So that is how the whole system is uh, kept one above the other. So and when we are actually composting we need to set up the whole thing one above the other and compost in the top bin. With some people they will just keep one bin and start composting. See our experience is that when we are doing um, this as a pilot, we have realized that when you keep composting bin at the bottom, there is a chance of rat coming and attacking that because uh, the, what we deposit as waste is a food for the rat. So they can come and attack. So in, in this kind of uh, position, that uh, the advantage is that we are keeping the food or the waste, uh, uh, food waste at a height. So even if the rat has to attack this, it has to climb all the way and attack uh, this container. So it's always um, advantageous to put the whole system uh, one above the other and start composting at the top bin. And here another advantage is that you are operating at, uh, at a convenient height. You don't have to bend down. Uh, or go up, so it's a, a convenient height for people to operate the whole system. So this is how the the system is set up, and uh, we can also pour water in, in this portion so that the ants will not be able to come in. And if you have some uh, fruit fly pro problem, uh, we can take out this lid and put a, a two or three uh, paraffin balls in this which will keep the fumes of this uh, paraffin balls will keep off the fruit flies and another very important thing is that this um, bin has to be kept in a ventilated uh, place that is we need a lot of it, uh, air movement so that uh, the moisture generated goes out and uh, there is easy air flowing into the container and uh, we should not keep this in rain or even in sun directly so that will damage the system or the process. 
So this is what uh, I want to share with you uh, regarding the bin. So now how do we uh, compost the waste using this container? So we have an aerobic uh, composting medium which comes either in a bag like this. It's a 30 liter bag which weighs around 9 kg. And here it is a ready to use uh, composting medium. So this is the composting medium is also available in a brick form. Uh, it's a compacted version of this composting medium. And this needs to be hydrated uh, before it is, uh, it is used in the container. So these are the two ways uh, we can use the aerobic uh, composting medium. So how do we go about uh, using this container? So what we do is that uh, we to start for some we start with uh, putting about uh, one liter of the composting media in all the three buckets. In all the three buckets, we put approximately one liter of composting media at the base so this is the aerobic composting media this is actually uh, made of uh, coir pith clean coir pith inoculated with aerobic composting microbes so we start with pouring approximately one liter of the composting media and uh, the waste that we have at home. What we do is that this container is kept uh, one above the other and in the top container we start composting in the top container. So the, uh, the food waste, whatever organic waste that is generated in our house that is spread, put as, spread as a layer on top of the composting media that we have already uh, deposited in this top bin. And uh, once again we put about one liter of composting media on top of this uh, waste that we have deposited in the top bin. We cover the waste that we have deposited with the composting media again. So by this process, we repeat this process and uh, this bin will get filled up in a few days time. Normally in a family of four or five members, it takes about 10 days uh, for this bin to get filled up. And once the bin is filled up. We remove this bin and keep it at, at the center position and remove the center bin and keep it on top. So again after the second bin is full we take the first bin to the bottom and bring the last bin to the top. So this is a cyclic process of using one bin after another and layering the food waste in these bins. Now there are a few things uh, which I want to um, caution you. Uh, that is this whole system is designed uh, for actually managing the waste generated in a house uh, where approximately we generate about a half kg to one kg of organic waste daily. Suppose if we have more members or if we have a function and if you have more waste generated then uh, this system can ha handle maximum uh, of uh, one and a half to two kg per day. Per, no, in the sense not every day. Suppose in a, uh, if you have some additional waste generated in a particular day that can be uh, put into this uh, by having two separate layers. But it, we cannot deposit 2 kg uh, or more than 1 kg waste daily. 
uh, because the system cannot handle that. So here what happens is that the uh, wet waste, so the organic waste that we are introducing into this compost uh, bin undergoes an aerobic composting process. Uh, that is, uh, the microbes, the carpet provides the aerobic environment and the microbes in the carpet, they um, hasten the aerobic composting process and in about 20 or 25 days time, the whole organic material gets composted. So in this organic composting process, when we um, actually uh, subject this to the composting, as you have seen, there is a ventilation on top and it is the aerobic composting is an exothermic process. So the hot moist air that is generated by the composting process goes out through the container and when the hot air goes up, escapes, there is a vacuum created inside the container. And by this vacuum, uh, fresh air is pulled inside from all the holes on the sides. So there is a continuous uh, cycling of air in this container by the uh, pull created by the exothermic reaction. So this keeps the composting always very active. And uh, um, the most in, um, positive aspect is that this very favorable aerobic uh, environment helps break down all the organic matter that we have deposited into an excellent compost. See, in most of the composting programs that we are familiar with, we are actually dehydrating the organic material. Uh, in a lot of uh, such uh, composting systems, we put the organic waste and we take out the leachate through a tap or something like that. But ultimately what is happening is that we are losing a lot of nutrition from the organic material and we are also uh, not maintaining an optimum air water balance in the composting container. Therefore, ultimately what we get is not really a composted uh, organic material but a dehydrated organic material. So the quality of this dehydrated organic material is very poor compared to a proper compost. So this is one major uh, uh, opportunity of this system because here we are uh, providing a very favorable uh, aerobic um, environment which is helping a very good uh, composting of the organic material. So the quality of the compost that we get finally, it is very ideal for the plant growth because it has all the nutrition. We are not losing any nutrition even by a leachate program. So this is uh, uh, the container which is actually helping us to do um, aerobic composting at home. And um, as I told you, because this is a decentralized waste management program, you don't, we don't need any person to come collect the waste, then transport it, accumulate it. So we are uh, converting the waste we are generating uh, in our own uh, house into a compost. And uh, this compost, the quality compost that we are generating will help us to grow uh, quality vegetables or fruits in our own house. So that is another major opportunity, especially in this uh, uh, COVID uh, scenario where we are facing a lot of issues in terms of uh, procuring the required vegetables and other food stuff. We are able to grow our requirement in our own houses. And another advantage of this uh, growing at, in our own house is that we, we know what are the inputs that we are using. We can avoid all types of harmful chemicals. So the, the produce that we get from this um, compost or this uh, process is a high quality food, very fresh food. So which will really help uh, in our health and immunity. And uh, for managing diseases like uh, COVID, we, know we need a lot of immunity. So this can, the, we can, uh, we, we, uh, to get good immunity, we need to have good food. So very often uh, the vegetables and other food that we buy from the market, it is grown with a lot of chemicals. And we know what kind of chemicals that we are using in our farm. So all these chemicals are really um, causing a lot of uh, health issues because uh, a lot of uh, residues affecting our internal systems. 
So here we have an opportunity to convert all different types of uh, waste, organic waste in our house uh, in a very effective way. Here the advantage of this, uh, by this composting system, we can manage organic waste without smell. So there will not be any smell and there will not be any leachate which is uh, disturbing our uh, whole environment. And another very important thing is that the third problem that we often come across in home composting is uh, maggots, uh, especially the maggots of the black soldier fly. So what happens is that when uh, ex during rainy season when the humidity, atmospheric humidity is more, so the organic waste that we deposit uh, will not um, come to an optimum moisture level. So there will be excess moisture. So the flies, when they lay the eggs, the eggs will hatch into maggots. And these maggots, uh, they are actually nature's composter. They are one of the best composting agent in nature. But very often, uh, we may not be very comfortable to have these maggots in our house. So sometimes they may also come out of these uh, bins. So it can cause some disturbance. So what we need to do is that, especially in win uh, rainy season when there is more uh, moisture, we need to add more of the composting medium. Each day, instead of one liter, we can even add two liters of the composting medium. So that will help maintain an optimum moisture and uh, the, the chances of the um, eggs of the fly hatching will be very less. And, uh, very, and when, when I say we can add more composting medium, automatically uh, you will say uh, we will have to buy more of medium. Actually what happens is that we, we can recycle the compost that we generate. So after one uh, composting cycle, for the next composting cycle, we can use almost 70 or 80 percent of the compost itself. So this recycling can be done two or three times. So even if you use more composting media during the rainy season, in the subsequent uh, dry season, uh, you will be using this compost again for composting. So we are not actually um, using uh, or, uh, or losing money by using more of uh, media during the rainy season. So uh, this is what I want to share with you. Uh, regarding the um, home composting program, the container and um, the advantages of uh, home composting. That is, we, we are able to do a decentralized uh, waste management program and this will help us uh, generate excellent compost uh, in our own houses. So I just want to sh show you the compost that we have generated by uh, this uh, waste management uh, program. Um, So this is a compost that we are generating using this. Uh, we have used uh, even the fish, uh, whatever, veg and non-veg, all can be put into this and uh, there will not be any smell. This is some fish shell that uh, we got during our composting program. So this is the um, system that we, uh, we are introducing um, to people who have uh, who are interested in um, home composting thank you